for uh, making arrangements and having me on the show. I really appreciate that. I'm, I never know really quite where to start, but most people want to know, well, how did you come up with this? And um, I, I grew up on a ranch environment in Montana, and we raised cattle. And um, uh, when I was very young, I was I was a cowboy, and that's a boy who sits on a horse. It's not the romantic cowboy that you see in Western movies. But anyhow, um, when I was young, I was taught to babysit a herd of cows. And um, what you're looking for is, is a cow in the pasture. If there's any cow that isn't looking proper, I mean, he's not acting or he or her not acting the same as the rest of the herd, meaning they have glassy eyes or they're bawling or there's something wrong. Then we would take them out of the pasture, put them in a holding pen. And then first thing we would do is ride out the pasture and make sure there's no noxious weeds, make sure the water is okay, uh, go upstream, make sure there's not a dead animal upstream. But anyhow, the concept that I was taught very young is if you keep the pasture clean and pristine, then the animals will have health. And if, you, if, the, cow, if, the, if the animals are healthy, then you can make a living. Otherwise, if the animals get sick and they have to call a doctor, or the veterinarians, then you have to toss the keys up in the air. You call the banker, toss the keys up in the air and say, hey, you guys own this. We're out of here because there's no way you can make any money if the animals get sick. So the reason I bring that up is because I've always had this prevention bent. Um, if there's something wrong, then what's causing it? Not what do I take to make me feel better? <laughs> it's something in the pasture is not right. So anyhow, I spent many years in that environment. And then when I left, I grew, I, I was enamored by the cable television industry back in the early 60s. And in the town I lived in, we had one or two TV stations. And with the advent of cable television, we could bring in television signals from adjacent towns, or eventually we could get them off satellite and so on. So that really appealed to me because all of a sudden, the world was bigger than uh, Billings, Montana, the town that I grew up in. And I could see, you know, how people were in L.A., the news in L.A. or Atlanta or sporting events around the world. And then, then eventually with CNN, the world became very, very small. We all could see each other and communicate and, and interact. So that was I was just totally enamored with that. I, and I loved the concept of of. Um, television and you know, it's, it's a it's a double-edged sword you know it's, it has all the benefits and all these opportunities but there's also you know the other side of it which sometimes it, the influences are a little uh, not what you want but anyhow the uh, I spent about 30 years in that industry and in that industry you have to what they call ground all of the electrical equipment you have to and I'm sure it's that way in India too. And then before you go into a house, you have to have a ground rod driven in the house, in the ground where they connect the cable to it and then run it into the house and connect it to the TV. The reason for the ground rod is when you have cable TV lines in the air, then the wind blows and it'll create static charges on them. And so there's electrical charge or there can be lightning in the air and that lightning will travel on those miles of wire in the air. And if you don't ground it, then it could go into the house and blow up a TV set. More, more, more concerning is it can cause a fire. Uh, that's the number one reason that you ground is to, is to maintain the electrical stability of the system and to uh, keep everything safe and to prevent fire. And in the early days, most of the big fires were caused from electrical events. So and lightning will start fires and so on. So it's so anyhow, that was the, the, the concept behind all of it. But in 1950, or 19, I'm losing my thoughts here. In 1984, I think I was 50 years old. Let's put it that way. I ended up with a, uh, an infection from an, an abscess from a, a dental a root canal and it ended up in my liver and it, created a um, 
you know, problem in my liver, an abscess in my liver. And anyhow, I didn't was going to the doctor for a few months. I and finally they they couldn't figure out what it was because it was they thought it was hepatitis, but they didn't register that way. But anyhow, I got very sick one one evening, and they took me to the uh, emergency room, and they put me in a CAT scan, and they saw that I had an abscess in my liver, and so they drained the liver that right right while I was in the CAT scan actually. And uh, so the next morning, a doctor comes in. He says, well, we've, we've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that we found out what is going on with you. And they said, you have an abscess. And he said, uh, and they asked me if I had been bit. And I said, no. And they asked if I had any dental work. And I said, yes, I had a root canal. And they said, well, some bacteria from your mouth in that area has gotten into your system. And it settled in your liver and your health wasn't good enough at the time to fight it off. Or And so anyhow, it ended up destroying most of my liver. And so the, that was, I mean, the good news was that they found out what it was. The bad news was that they didn't know if I could survive it because so much of my liver had been damaged. And um, so they told me I needed to go home, get my house in order in case you know, prepare for, because I was young enough to get a new liver, but there's just not a lot of new livers on the market. So anyhow, a couple of days later, I would, I did go home after a few days and I uh, was at home and uh, they would send a nurse out every day to had IVs and all kinds of antibiotics and so on. And anyhow, a young surgeon called and he said uh, they'd like to do some experimental surgery. So I said, I don't have anything. I don't have anything to lose. So anyhow, they went in and they cut out, I think it was five, six of the main lobe of my liver. And then I survived. I came out of it. And, uh, but there was no guarantees at the time. But anyhow, so I, a few weeks later, I ended up back home. And it took me about a month to be able to really walk, you know, around the, around the block, around the house. And about six months, my liver had fully recovered and fully grown back to its original size. And so it's remarkable that the body is capable of doing that. And, but anyhow, so that's kind of what took me out of the business world, out of the cable, out of everything, because I almost died. And when you go through that, I could tell all kinds of stories that went on with it. And it's very personal, but in, in, during my recovery, I was laying in bed one morning and I was looking around my house in my bedroom. I had, I, I love art and I've collected a lot of art and, um, and I had a nice big home. I was very successful and all that kind of stuff. But, but anyhow, I was looking around the room and I realized that I almost died. And if I would have died, then what would have happened to all these possessions, all these things that I spent my life collecting. And I recognized for the first time that I didn't own any of this stuff. It all owned me because I brought it into my home. I had to build a bigger home. I had to have more stuff, but I was taking care of stuff. My life was about stuff. And so I did just with this, I just this epiphany came through and I, I called my children and I said, you can please come and get whatever you would have taken had I died. And I said, and, and uh, because but I, I gave away absolutely everything I owned except two ca two suitcases uh, of clothing and things that I could put in an RV. And I spent four years driving around the United States, a national park to national park, uh, just spending time in nature because that's where I felt best. But the main thing is I didn't want to go back to work uh, in the business world. I didn't want to go back to work, you know, work chasing money. I wanted to, I remember saying to my when you when you come close to death it's a very personal thing and, and it's just you there's no one else there and so you kind of look back on your life who am i who was i what did i do was i you know was my life worthwhile and that's kind of what came to me and then so I, I i had this thing in me that i wanted to make my life about something bigger and better and not about money i wanted to make my so when i die next time i can be happy with myself not with anybody else, don't care what anybody else in the world thinks, but I could be happy with myself. 
And so that was my um, uh, journey. And so I spent four years driving around the United States in these parks. And then I was parked down at Key Largo, down in Florida, a town. And um, one night, I mean, every night I would go out and I would, it was on the Gulf of Mexico. So I would go out at night and watch the manatee or watch the sunset across the bay. And, and but you're really in nature. I mean, there's, you know, it's just pure nature down there. And so one night I was standing there and I had this feeling come over me was, you know, to become an opposite charge. Didn't know what it meant to become an opposite charge to me would be to go poke people and stir them up and get them to do something. Uh, and then, so I went in the bus or in the RV that night and I wrote that down. And then I also had this feeling come over me like status quo is the enemy. It made no sense, but I wrote it down. I still have the paper uh, 20 years, 23 years later. So anyhow, the um, I just had this urge come over me. It was like all of a sudden I went back outdoors and I was just looking at the bay and I had this urge that nature or some, you know, something bigger than me was talking to me. And I felt this urge that I had to go back to the West where I was from, California and Montana, that area. And um, I didn't know what it was. So I got on my bus a few days later and I drove back to California. Didn't like it there. I went to Arizona, ended up in a little town called Sedona, Arizona, which is kind of a tourist town now. But, but anyhow, I um, didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I had to go back and do something because spending time as nature is fun. Playing with the campers at night is fun, but I had to go and do something. So I, I was work, spending time in Sedona, Arizona. And in order to I hate to drag this on like this, but it's kind of how this all came about. And it, I think it'll make sense. But anyhow, I spent a little bit of time helping some art galleries there light their art because I had a lot of knowledge about art and lighting. And it was just a hobby and it was service, free service to just to entertain myself. But anyhow, one day I had a computer that I was trying to order some equipment on started to crash and i realized that that uh, there was static electricity so i had to every time i would touch the computer it would glitch and go and it would shut down so i have to restart it and it was really getting to be a pain so when i went on i got a piece of copper tape put it across my desk connected it to a ground electrical ground outlet and then I would touch the tape before I touched my computer and to solve the problem. And so that got my mind thinking. And so right after that, I went outdoors, sat on a bench, and up pulls a big tour bus. And it was full of tourists from, I think, I believe they were from Japan. But anyhow, they were, they were all wearing kind of a white, bright white Nike type tennis shoe. And for some reason, intuitively, something came to me. I just said, I wonder if there's a consequence that us humans are we're no longer naturally grounded. When I was a kid, we were barefoot all the time. The only time we wore shoes was to go to church, go to school, go to some event. And as soon as we were home, we would lose the shoes. We were, we were pretty much barefoot. And um, I didn't know what to do next, but I just wanted to answer that question. So I went, I went home that night and I took some electric meter out of my tools and I went around and I started measuring uh, the difference, the electrical potential on my body versus the electrical potential of the earth, which is something I know something about because of all my years in grounding. And hardly anybody else would even know what I'm talking about. Um, so anyhow, but that night, I would go through the house and I would see that you do create a lot of static electricity on your body when you walk around, if there's carpets, uh, if you have shoes on and carpets and so on. And then you have all these EMFs or electromagnetic fields that are radiating from the wires in the walls and plugs and appliances and those things. But anyhow, you can take a voltmeter grounded to the earth and walk around the house and measure, put your, just hold it in your thumb 
and you can read the meter and read the charges, the voltages that are on your body. And then when you ground, obviously they go away. So you put your feet on the earth or on the ground, then they're gone. So this really intrigued me. So that night I went to the hardware store and got a three inch roll of metal duct tape, aluminum type, laid it across my bed, connected it to a wire that went out the window, connected it to a ground rod. And then I would lay on the, on the uh, tape And then I would take the meter and test and make sure that I was grounded because as long as I was grounded, the meter would read zero. If if I was ungrounded, then I would have all this extraneous voltage on my body. And so I thought, didn't know what to do about it. But anyhow, while I was testing it, all of a sudden I fell asleep. The next morning I woke up and the meter was by my side. And I said, wow, there's something going on here because normally I don't sleep. At that time, I was in my 50s and uh, around 54. And I'm now 77, going on 78 real quick. (laughs) But anyhow, um, I noticed that I slept better. And I grounded myself for a couple more nights, same thing. Then I grounded one of my friends in the neighborhood who would sit sit around and talk to each other quite a bit. And I said, you know, you need to try this. So I went and put it on his bed. A couple, three days later, he came back. He says, do you think this could be affecting my arthritis? I said, no, I think it just helps with sleep. And then he said that his arthritis was way down, and I recognized that my pain was way down. The because I grew up a cowboy, I've spent a lot of my life skiing, riding horses, doing a lot of dumb things, <laughs> tennis, whatever. But I had a lot of injuries, and um, you know, 50 years old, the most men are, you know, they've run up against the wall so many times they've got aches and pains and bruises everywhere. But anyhow. Um, I um, didn't know what to do with that. So back then, we didn't have much of an internet. We had mostly, uh, we had AOL and telephone lines. And and so I went on the internet trying to find out how, why grounding affects the body. There was nothing in the literature. I went down to uh, University uh, of Arizona in Tucson and some friends there, they were medical type. I said, you know, can you explain it? Is there any information on this anywhere? And nobody could find anything that would uh, suggest that grounding the body would affect the body in any way, let alone pain. And uh, so anyhow, I I struggled for a a period of time trying to find out. And then finally, I said, well, I think I'll just go out to UCLA in in California. They all know because it's a big university, a big medical university. and So anyhow, I went there and they listened to me and I said, you know, I want to do a study on this or something, you know, because people need to know about this. This is important. And they pretty much laughed me off campus. They said, you're crazy. If you expect us to believe that somebody's going to tie a wire around somebody's toe, stick it in the ground and they're going to sleep better. They said, get out of here. You're nuts. (laughs) But anyhow, we joked around after that and they didn't really understand anything about it the electrical aspects of the body. And at that time, I knew very little about the biological effects. So anyhow, I shortly after that, I went to Ventura, California, and I designed a study with the help of a couple of the students from UCLA. And we grounded, we had a study where we had 60 subjects, 30 of them were grounded, 30 of them weren't. And we verified that grounding the body at night uh, you slept better, it reduced pain, you felt better. And then we also got lots of reports back about, especially from women, uh, t- TMJ, menstrual cramps disappearing, all kinds of, just a, a plethora of different things. And I remember one person said, well, this can't be a cure-all. And I said, I don't think it's a cure-all, but I th- it may be a causal, meaning that we are no longer naturally grounded and then all of these health disorders are beginning to manifest. So anyhow, I did publish that study. Uh, and it was a, more of an anecdotal study. Then I ended up doing a study with a, a doctor in San Diego where we measured cortisol. Cortisol secretion, that's your stress, stress hormone. And um, 
So what we found was before grounding, everybody's cortisol was, you know, like spaghetti. We, you know, they were, they were all over the place. Uh, and, and so we grounded everybody. And six, eight weeks later, we, when we, re, when we measured cortisol every four hours for 24 hours before, ever, and 24, every four hours, 24 hours after, the cortisol normalized into a nice rhythmic band afterwards and before it was all like spaghetti. And so what we, re- and then what we recognized more than anything was at four o'clock in the morning, cortisol begins to spike when you're grounded. It does it anyway, but it's but it's it, it's really elevated, and that's what allows you to get out of bed in the morning and have good energy when you get up. And anyhow, so anyhow, we saw very clearly that grounding had something to do with normalizing uh, hormone secretions, and then we were going to expand that study, but everybody got excited and said, "Well, let's go study this. Let's go study that." So over a period of twenty years now. We have produced almost 30 papers. Uh, most of them are peer-reviewed published studies that collectively demonstrate that when you are grounded, it reduces inflammation and pain. And most people aren't aware, and I wasn't aware at the time, that if you have pain, you have inflammation. You cannot have pain without having inflammation. So if there's any inflammation in your joints or anywhere in your body, then it'll manifest as pain. So pain is the message to the brain that, hey, I'm on fire, get me out of here. So, but anyhow, the big problem was back then we learned that grounding reduced the pain, but we didn't know anything about inflammation. Nobody did. 20 years ago, the word inflammation was not even in the literature. So about 204, there was a cover on uh, Time magazine was the word inflammation and it showed a body and it showed the body on fire and it said in summary it said basically you don't have all of these health disorders that we name you don't have arthritis lupus cancer so on what you have is chronic inflammation low-grade chronic inflammation and this inflammation manifests differently in different people based on their lifestyle and their genetics based on you know their their health habits their food their there's but anyhow the inflammation is the is the fire starter that that promotes all of these modern health disorders the problem at that time was is we did not know how grounding affected inflammation so we spent the next 5 or 6 years uh, and it's hard to believe that it takes that long but when you realize that it's been less than 20 years that anybody knew knew the word inflammation. So, but anyhow, we started looking at how could electrons, I mean, when you touch the earth, your body, I mean, the earth has a an abundance or a, I don't know, I'm challenged sometimes to explain it, but it's like the ocean. When you get in the ocean, you get wet <laughs> all over your body. Okay, well, when you touch the earth barefoot, then the electrical energy of the earth is absorbed into your body, all over your body, throughout your body, and you actually radiate an electric field, the earth's electric field, when you are standing barefoot on the earth. As soon as you put shoes on, it's gone. We understood that, but we didn't understand how grounding affected inflammation until one day I was working on a study, and we were talking about how pain is caused by neutrophils and neutrophils are a white blood cell that the immune system sends to the site of an injury or if you have a pathogen in your body and it will go over and wrap itself around the pathogen or the damaged cell and it will start ripping the electrons away from it and destroy it. That's how the body destroys pathogen. That's how it destroys bacteria. And so anyhow, in the process, if you have an excess of reactive oxygen. I mean, these the neutrophil wraps itself around and releases this reactive oxygen that rifts the electron. So if you, once the pathogen has been destroyed, 
if you don't have enough free electrons or redox potential or ground to reduce those excess radicals, then they will attack an adjacent cell, steal an electron from it, and it will send out a message to the immune system. The immune system sends another neutrophil. And, and so you have a chain reaction. And then this eventually is it's collateral damage and it's continuous. So it's like a log on fire. It's like starting a fire and the fire is burning. And um, the, only, the only thing that we could make sense of is as soon as we grounded the body, then that process stopped. And um, so then we knew that it was the excess radicals from the neutrophils that were causing the inflammation and eventually the pain or the problem, the health disorder. And then we recognize that when the body is grounded, it's flooded with free electron. And then if you have free electrons in your body, then they automatically instantly neutralize these excess radicals and that prevents inflammation. So with my background of grounding to prevent fire, inflammation is fire. Inflame, body is in flame. It is on fire, literally. Even though it's a very low smoldering fire, it's, it's still a fire. So I kind of um, recognized that, uh, okay, we're just grounding the body. And then I started to look back in time, and I realized that before 1960, um, we were all barefoot. I mean, you know, we, we lived outdoors. We didn't, in, in, you know, television came along in the 50s. And people started spending more time indoors, uh, of course. And then late 1950s, we started wearing tennis shoes, uh, the kids type tennis shoes. And then in uh, 1959, they invented polymers. That's only 60 years ago. We invented plastics 60 some years ago. And since then, the number one thing we did with plastics is we put them on the soles of our shoes. We put carpets in our home. We put plastic flooring in our homes, uh, and we live in a plasticized world. I don't know it's different in different countries and different uh, cities and environments, but basically, we have insulated ourselves from the earth over a period of 60 years completely. And if you go back to 1960, you can see that diabetes, autism, lupus, MS, cancer, all of these, there were like, you know, one in 10,000. And today they're one in 40 or one in 50. So anyhow, you have an exponential curve that's the increase in autoimmune disease is skyrocketing and it still is to this day. And so what we have learned and all of our work and all of our studies is we take the shoes off or we ground people in their home. Then it puts the fire of inflammation out and then the immune system is not spending its energy fighting the fire of inflammation that it is creating because it's ungrounded. Now the immune system can go back to work and do the things that it normally does, which is return the body to normal every day. I mean, we, the body is a self-healing mechanism. I mean, it is your immune system that keeps, your immune system is who you are. You take care of your immune system, and you're gonna have health. If you don't have health, I don't care who it is, if you do not have health, then something you're doing is interfering with your immune system's ability to maintain health. And that can be food, it can be environment, it can be a lot of things, but we know primarily inflammation. You cannot have inflammation if you're standing barefoot on the earth. That's why we ground everything in the world to the earth. And so I could go on for hours and talk about each and every one of the studies and, and so on, but what I would rather do is if you can help me understand or what do you want to know about grounding that I can share with you? Clint, you mentioned something about an electrical field around the body. Was it measured? I sorry, I missed that part and I'm very curious to understand it. Was that sort of photographed or what 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 was it? Well, you can measure electric fields. So if, if you're insulated from the earth, if you're 
wearing shoes or standing on a floor that's not grounded, then the electric fields and everything in your home uh, and the environment you know, of the environment, just the, the atmosphere is positive. So your body becomes positive, more positive relative to the earth. And, and when you stand on the earth, then your earth, then, I mean, the earth is infinitely large and you're infinitely small, relatively speaking. So when you put your feet on the earth, then your body becomes one and the same as the earth. And then the earth has a, an abundance of free electrons, a sea of electrons. I mean, there's a layer of electrons that are migrating all around the earth everywhere. It's, it's everywhere at all times. So when you stand on the earth, then your body becomes grounded and charged with those free electrons, that energy, earth's energy. And then like the earth itself, you actually radiate this energy. This is demonstrable and it's measurable. Okay. And, it's, and these studies are available on the website you mentioned uh, earlier. Yes. We have a website called the Earthing Institute. Dot net and all of the papers are published there and you can translate most anything and they uh, also have hundreds of articles and feedback from people and their experiences with grounding there's also the earthing book it's on amazon and most of the bookstores there's thousands and thousands of reader reports about their experiences from reading the book and then going out and grounding themselves. We have a couple of good movies. One is a 15 minute short called Down to Earth. It's been seen by 60, 70 million people, um, but it's on YouTube also, a Down to Earth video um, uh, on the Earthing channel. And, and then we have the Earthing movie, which is very interesting and it took it's very it's totally authentic uh it took about three or four years to make and it's kind of explains everything about earthing and how it came about and uh there's a a host of doctors everybody every i mean people from the fda people you know uh, deepak chopa doctor uh, i mean just all the doctors there's a host of people on it but most of all, there's a there's a group of individuals that tell their story, and the story that in the beginning I spent most of my time grounding people with uh, lupus, MS, and diabetes, and chronic arthritis, and so I learned a lot about grounding. I mean, about I, I become. I started reading all the literature about all of these modern health disorders. And it was funny in the early days when you would pull up and you know, ask a question like, what is the cause of pain? In the literature, it's cause unknown. What is the cause of MS? Cause unknown. What is diabetes? Cause unknown. It was unbelievable to me that with all of the modern institutions we have and with all of the medical research and everything that's being done around the world, you can have a statement that says cause unknown. Of course, you have to know the cause because that's what you're treating, in my mind, because of my background. But I, in the, the modern world, especially uh, pharmaceutical world, it is not about prevention. It is 100% about giving its palliative care, providing you with pills that will help you cope with your health disorder uh, until you get to the end. I mean, it's palliative care, really. So the antibiotics and some of those things are essential, but uh, it, at times in people's lives, but, but, but primarily it's people, and that's what I, I like about Ayurveda, and uh, is something's causing this problem, and you have to fix your food, fix your health, fix your, your and that's what I loved about Deepak Chopra, when I started working with him, it was, I could ground people physically and put their pain out, but what was causing the health problem? All too often, it was a mental 
you know, an event that went on in their loss. I said, you ground them mentally. I'll ground them physically. I'll put the fire out, but you got to put out the cause of the fire. And so that takes me to a, another, unless somebody's got a question real quick, but when, when I was grounding women in the early days who had diabetes, inflammation, MS, and lupus, one day I was grounding a, a lady who had severe MS. And you know, she her arm, she had to hold her arm to keep it from moving around and so on. And she was in a lot of pain, terrible pain, and and just lots of fear, lots of fear. And so I went over and grounded her, grounded her bed for her, gave her patches, different ways that she could ground herself. And I I was looking at her and I said, What happened in your life that caused MS to manifest? You weren't born with MS. You weren't born with MS or diabetes. You weren't born with any of this. So I said, what happened? And she said, I don't know. I just, I was about 30 years old and I just kept starting feeling worse and worse. And then all of a sudden I started getting these side effects um, of loss of muscle control and so on. And so she, she, her answer was that she didn't know. And so I put patches on her and grounded her and everything to because we were doing a little bit of a study with her. And all of a sudden, the, uh, the pain in the arm stopped. And she still had, I mean, the problems, the damage. And so and then she said, you know, she kind of looked at me. She says, you know, when I was 30, I lost my husband. A couple of years later, I lost my house. This is back in 2008. And um, then I lost my job, and then my my life, uh, the American dream, anyway, all of a sudden was totally turned upside down. And she went into such a fight or flight state, a sympathetic state, where cortisol was totally elevated, chronically elevated, and so the cortisol eventually created inflammation in the body anxiety, irritability, and then on to depression. And she stayed in that state. And then the inflammation began to manifest and manifest more and more. And then uh, uh, MS was, was the end result. And so I had grounded enough people at that time. And I, and I, I got in the habit of ask, asking that question. I've grounded a thousand people. I ask everyone, I said, what happened in your life that caused this to manifest? And everybody has a story of emotional, I mean, loss. They lost something. Something, their life was, they expected one thing and it didn't turn out or something went wrong. And then all of a sudden they're experiencing loss and grief, un uncontrolled grief and loss. And they don't come out of it. And cortisol runs, they, they don't sleep and, and so on and so on. But anyhow, as time went on, I began to recognize all of this. And then I went, grounded a woman one day and I said, and I put a patch, electrode patch in the palm of her hand, snapped a cord on it. And I said, you no longer have, I and mean, she'd been struggling really bad with MS. I said, you no longer have MS because as soon as I put this patch on you, your body is being flooded with free electrons and it's going to stop the neutrophils that are oxidizing the myelin sheath and causing the MS. And she looked at me and just kind of like, didn't know what to think. So anyhow, a few minutes later, the pain stopped and she started feeling better. And she had to uh, get up and go to the bathroom after about you know, 45 minutes. And so she went into the bathroom and she came back out holding her arm, of course. Mm -hmm. And she was looking, she says, look at me, I'm, I'm, I'm back to myself. Meaning that the pain had come down. Her, the number one thing that happens, happens with grounding is you have increased circulation. It normalizes the blood viscosity and the blood flows easier and faster. And that, that's how it puts out the inflammation, circulating the, the electrons on the red, via the red blood cells. So anyhow, but the pain stopped after you know, 30, 40 minutes. Uh, she went in there and her color had come back, her facial color, the blood, the circulation. Her demeanor changed because now she wasn't in this hot burning pain. She was. She still had pain, but it was a calm, 
more of a healing pain. So anyhow, I said, as long as you have this patch on it, you no longer have MS. And it was grounded to the earth. And so she called it the magic patch. But anyhow, I, and I have grounded hundreds of women with MS and lupus. And that's where we see the uh, most significant change because their bodies are on real fire. They have lots of pain and they have lots of emotional stress and so on. So to be able to ground them is really remarkable. And, and it's as simple as getting them if they can't do anything else and they don't have patches. It's as simple as going outdoors, putting your bare feet and your bare hands on the earth and sitting there and staying there until the pain goes away because the earth will neutralize all the pain in your body. I can guarantee this. All you have to do is go do it. So anyhow, the, the next side of grounding that I think is as important as reducing the inflammation is that when you sit on the earth, the first thing it does is it discharges these electrical charges on your body, the static electricity. And, and then all of a sudden, you, it's like the muscles, everything kind of releases. It just, there's a release. And then your respiration changes. But as you sit there, the pain, your body is absorbing the free electrons and your body is grounded, just like we would ground a TV set or a, a computer or anything else. So it's now grounded. So there's no charges. There's no extraneous charges running around in or on your body. Inflammation is charge. I mean, yeah, inflammation is charge because you have, you don't have enough negative charge. You have too much positive charge and it's creating a fire. So anyhow, the, the number one thing that we see beyond reducing the inflammation is that the sympathetic nervous system immediately calms. And then the parasympathetic comes up and the sympathetic is driving cortisol. It's filling your body full of cortisol. It's fight or flight. So as soon as you um, are well grounded, it only takes a few minutes. Sometimes it's just instant. Then that all settles and stops. Then there's a calmness comes over the body. The parasympathetic comes up. And that's your you know, balance that you feel, you feel better. You don't feel your body when you're in balance. I mean, you, when you don't have pain, inflammation in the body, your body is just this energy, this, you know, it's life, it's move, movement, and so on. But anyhow, the, the number one thing that we found is that people, when they're emotionally stressed, if they will sit on the earth, then the earth's electric field, the energy of the earth, the rhythms of the earth, the Earth's electric field has rhythms. The earth itself has rhythms. It has circadian rhythms. It goes up and down. And so when you're connected to the earth, then these rhythms are, they're in your body. They're, it's like uh, the earth is a metronome. Um, and, and so your body is singing with the earth. Or it's dancing with you know, the rhythms and tune and the, and the energy of the earth. And so what it does is it calms everything down then you can't be mad when you're grounded. You can't be upset. You, you, can't be, you can't hate anybody when you're sitting there grounded. You change. You, you become a, you know, a, a human being. I mean, rather than this, you know, I, I'm not sure of the word sometimes. But, but anyhow, grounding is, is throughout all time, from the very first amoeba of whatever on planet earth it was grounded all life on this planet has for millions and billions of years been grounded because they're either connected to the earth directly or they're crawling around on the earth and even the birds you know roost in trees that are you know grounded and um so anyhow our most natural state is to be grounded. And that means to have your body flooded with earth energy. You have to have the energy of the earth inside of you. And when you do that, now you are connected to every other living thing on the planet. Every other living person who is grounded, every tree, every animal, anything in the world, we're all one. We're all part of this energy. We're all part of the earth. 
uh, I always tell people we're the earth up walking around. <laughs> you didn't come here from a planet out there. You, you, you are earth. And um, you come from the earth, you're going to go back to the earth. In the meantime, if you stay connected, you're going to be a lot healthier and happier. And uh, so anyhow, it's, it's, it's really the thing I love about grounding and the reason I put the last 23 years of my life in it is because I feel good about being able to share this with people primarily because it's free. You can buy, you can make your own grounding mats. You can, you can do all kinds of things. There's information to do that on the internet. You can, if you have money, you can buy things that are already made up. But most important, all you have to do is take your shoes off, go outdoors and stay grounded and wear your shoes on purpose. If there's glass, or if it's hot, or if it's rocky or something, put shoes on. But if, if otherwise, you, you, you want to reconnect and stay connected to Mother Earth, your mom. Anyhow, so I really love what I do. I'm sure you can tell. Uh, I'm 77 now, be going to 78 here in a few months. I had no idea that anybody could live that long 20 years ago. <laughs> and I had no, long, no idea that it would take this long to get enough information out for people to really begin to uh, understand what this connection and how important it is, but I love it. Yeah, so, I guess all of this takes time. In fact, the Gaia theory of Dr. James Lovelock has taken huge yes. amount of time to yeah. finally find find some. So I have a follow up question, sir. It, sleeping mats and walking on Earth are really the same thing. So is it a matter of how much time you're spending is, is is that the reason why you need uh, sleeping mats or grounding mats or wrist wrist grounding wrist bands? Yeah. Is it a matter of how much time? You, you know. So well, here's how I here's how I answer that two ways. One, in the natural world, you would be grounded twenty four seven because you know we didn't have shoes and so on. And if you look at the animals who live in the wild, they don't have cancer, they don't have heart disease, they don't have MS, lupus, autism, they have none of these modern health disorders. On the other hand, the animals who live indoors with their owners, they all manifest all kinds of health disorders, and 50% of them die from cancer, just like their owners. But that doesn't occur in the wild. So second of all, to be, to be grounded 24-7 is, is our natural state, I believe, and our immune system is operating 24-7, and it's operating with reactive oxygen species. So you need to put those, reduce those instantly. And before modern times, we were always natural, naturally grounded, so we didn't have to worry about that. It was automatic. It's like oxygen. It was automatic. You're breathing it. You, you were automatically grounded because you couldn't get off of the earth. So so anyhow, 24-7 is ideal. Uh, I try to ground as much as I can. I'm probably grounded 80, 90% of the day. I sleep on a grounded mat. I have grounded flooring. I have ground mat on my computer and so on. And, you know, I, I, I spend a lot of time barefoot. I try to walk a mile or two a day. Um, there are some grounded shoes coming on the market now um, and all of those things. So anyhow, more is better is what I'm is how I'm going to answer your question. But the most important answer is if you have pain in your body, you got to get grounded and stay grounded until it goes away. If you have health disorder, if your health is compromised, you have to get grounded and stay grounded as much as you absolutely can so that you can put the fire out. The fire goes out instantly when you're grounded then the immune system can go and repair that damage and ultimately go back to maintaining health, which is what it does 24-7. So when it's ungrounded, the, the immune system is compromised because it's challenged because now it has all this work to do to keep you healthy and to keep you alive and keep everything working the way nature intended or uh, developed in nature. and Anyhow, um, lost my thought there. Sorry. So the the main thing is, 
get, get grounded as much as you possibly can. Take the shoes off your kids if you possibly can. You know, I can, I'm not a medical doctor and, and my advice is free and you can take it. And you should always use your own good judgment and the medical practitioners that you have and so on. But, but it's like, I deal a lot with moms. They're 35 to 55 years old. They have an autoimmune disease of some kind today, almost 90%, if not more. And then on top of that, they're taking care of their mom, who is in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, and she's on a half a dozen meds and has all kinds of health, health problems. So the mom, this 35-year-old mom, is really stressed because she's taking care of her mom. And on the other hand, she's taking care of her children. And all too often, these moms are alone taking, raising the children. I hope it's not that way over there, as yes, it is here. But 80% of the women sleep alone, of our customers, you know, they sleep alone in the United States. Um, and that's because they're, it's because they have autoimmune disease. They have chronic health issues. And so they're not, they're, they're not you can't be happy. You can't put on a good show. If you have pain in your body, you can take pills and drugs and all these kind of things and buy some time for an event or something. But but anyhow, it's like autism and ADHD. It's rampant in this country. I think it's like one in 40 have autism now. And um, diabetes. I mean, almost 50% of our children now can be diagnosed with some level of diabetes. And um, these are all inflammation-related health disorders. Autism is an inflammation-related health disorder. Cancer is an inflammation-related health. You can't have cancer unless you have inflammation for an extended period of time. You can't have autism unless you have a fire, an inflammatory fire in the brain that, you know, that, you know, that causes what we call autism. You can't have kids sitting in schools that aren't grounded and wearing uh, rubber sole shoes that aren't full of anxiety and energy and, and 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 they're being treated as attention deficit disorder they need to have their shoes taken off they need to get grounded and get rid of that stress and then they'll turn into a normal human being and it happens rather instantly uh, and so i could go on and go on and on and on but um to answer your question so bottom line on that question is very simple more is better if you have any pain it's essential and stay grounded until the pain goes away. You can go take an Advil or a pill, but it would be better just to go and sit on the, go sit on the earth underneath of a tree, go put your feet in the creek, go do something. Uh, just dig a little hole and bury your feet in the earth and stay there until the pain's gone. Hi, I'm Jandi Patanker. I would like to say a big thank you to you. You have actually given my life back. I'm 52 years young now. And I did not know that I had an autoimmune disease and I was right. living it past eight years. So my body had totally just crumbled. I had severe hot flushes. My mother had a very traumatic infected knee transplant for which I was there last year for seven months. And just as what I had even shown the orthopedic surgeon, we did basic x-rays and things. And I was actually an uh, athlete in my school days where in the 70s that early 80s, we used to train basically barefoot at touching the grass and lots of injuries right. were very less actually that time. And what happened, I just, uh, because of the second wave of COVID which was going on in India that time in June, I just started walking out to feel good on the grass. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of my school days. And during my yep. pregnancy, I just had to know that, okay, walking on dew wet grass makes, you know, it's good for yes. your circulation. So to cut right. the whole story short, in in three days, I started sleeping really well. There was a lot yep. of emotional baggage which I had suppressed, like what you had said yes. earlier. And yep. with my parents, my father who's 85, mother who's 80, you know, so it was a very traumatic thing for me to single-handedly handle all that. I just started right. moving out and, you know, like I just said, feeling the earth and everything. And in 20 days, I just, all those eight years, I don't know how many years also, the weights and pains just vanished. And I started sleeping better. I came to Pune and I started grounding on wet mud because the lawns were closed. And uh, it was a beautiful journey. And from October, I started 
running now, which it was like I just couldn't even climb two steps up or get down. And I started mm-hmm. running and I'm sprinting now on wet to grass. And the last mm-hmm. thing was I today did a trek. I don't know after how many years without any aches and pains. And wherever there was a possibility of removing my shoes, getting you know grounded, I did that. So thank you so much for I just happened to just see your full earning movie. It just came from the universe to me, you know. So really thank you. Right. So there are two questions which I just want to ask is I had stopped the supplements last June, which the surgeon had given me to, um, you know, support whatever was going through. And he said now in May that now you can buy a pair of shoes and you can start running. But I haven't bought a pair of shoes as such. <laughs> I'm walking barefoot everywhere now. And uh, so my question is, do I need to take those supplements? It's been now nine months since I've not taken those supplements. I've not done well, anything, nothing, nothing. Yeah. The, the supplements, I mean, if they're nutritional supplements, yes. that mm-hmm. would be, they're probably no harm uh, and probably beneficial. Okay. But if you eat good food, yeah. you know, that's all yeah. you really yeah, need. Yeah, because I, 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 when I've, I've read your book, I watched all your live chat shows. I mean, I've just gone totally into deep, I think. We had started a Pune, in our Pune Joggers Park here, an earthing movement. It just happened to be, I think, around at least 20, 25 people are now earthing, you know. I'm just sharing my story <laughs> like how you were sharing and, you know, yeah, walking that's... with people, the old, the young, and that's what I'm doing because I don't want them to go through that traumatic experience, whether it is right. people who are with diabetes or high blood pressure or whatever. Yeah. So diet is good. Second thing, I just recently procured the universal earthing mat for my parents in Bombay uh-huh. and uh-huh. Uh, I told them just first check because I don't understand much of that electric circuit so my father is an electrical engineer so I told okay. him to read the whole booklet what is there what instructions they are giving so I just wanted to hear it from you is it correct that I tell them to check the earthing points where they are going to plug in that mat and use it yes they, sometimes they have to have an adapter Yes, okay. That adapter <clears throat> but, is not available in India. Okay. But they have a ground, right? Yeah. I Can mean, we call an electrician and get it there? Yeah. The, 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 main, the main thing is, I think they have a ground. I mean, some of the electrical in India is, is challenging. But, you know, the electrical outlet has a ground. Yes. And sometimes you have to change the adapter or whatever to make it work or you have to just connect it to the metal housing of the outlet. Okay. But yeah, if you don't know, the best thing to do is get an electrician. You just say okay. you want it to be grounded. And my to the dad, earth. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the electrical system is grounded. Yes. It has to be connected to the earth in order to prevent fire. Yes, yeah. And my dad does understand that concept. So I think it's yes. really good. Secondly, Good. how long should they start because they are old? Because whatever I read in the early mat, people have that toxic period, you know, coming out, you know, like in the sense that they have that period where things are coming out and they have sleepless nights and things. So um, how long should they start in the daytime because with the age factor and everything, whatever is there. Is there. Well, it's, you know, it's different for everybody. But if they're on a lot of meds and things like that, which most of them are, um, they have to go slow. I would su- I would suggest you know ground for four hours at a time during the day, and then <clears throat> if you start noticing change, which you will quite mm-hmm. rapidly, then a, a lot of people, so many older people sleep in recliner chairs. They don't sleep in bed. And so they put the mats on and they just, they keep them there forever. But anyhow, yeah, the, the main thing is if they notice any, let me give you an example. What's an example? It's like thyroid meds. If people are on thyroid meds, then as soon as you start grounding, then it reduces the inflammation and then the thyroid starts to rebuild. And then if you don't reduce the thyroid meds, then you'll start getting some heart palpitations. But Everybody that's on thyroid med kind of knows that already. It's like if you eat too many green vegetables, right, yeah. the, same, the same thing will happen. And um, 
but on but but they know and they should be if they're on a med then they should follow the advice of their practitioner on tapering off of it don't just taper off of anything just taper off of it slowly because your body is used to it being there and and, and when you take it away then the body has to re-energize the mechanisms of the body that normally produce you know the various hormones and whatever just go slow if there's any question most people can just lay down and go to sleep and <laughs> and, and they feel better uh, and all of a sudden a week later they take it for granted well other people have a lot of um, it's like if you have Lyme's disease or any of the um, diseases where you have bacteria in your body what happens in all too many cases it will you know lie in the uh, extremities and when you get grounded it normalizes the blood viscosity the blood becomes more thin like nature intended and then the blood can get in and out of the capillaries oxygenate the tissue but in the process you have a die off of these bacteria and then they flood the body the they flood the blood and then all of a sudden you feel like you have the flu yeah. because the same thing that happens during a flu is happening right now because you're having a die off. Mm -hmm. uh, the immune system is, you know, knocking out the pathogens and so on and viruses and so on. So it's really just caution. If nothing else, just start out outdoors walking barefoot on the earth. Wow, awesome. And if you can walk barefoot on the earth and you feel good, yeah. then you should feel good on the grounding mats but anyhow the older you are the more you need to be grounded younger people can get away with anything until you're about 27 but just daytime grounding is probably enough for younger people i think if they don't get any grounding then you're, the, they are going to develop the autoimmune adhd and all of those diabetes and all those things um but anyhow uh, again just caution just good judgment but if you're on meds never reduce meds or change yeah. meds without yeah. some yeah. some professional guidance thank you so much and thank you again really thank you <laughs> it's been a wonderful journey for me like you said with deepak Chopra, it's been like wayne dyer and you, everything just fruition together and it has given yes. my life back. Thank you so much. Hey, yes. That's the word I hear the most. I've given my life back. Yeah. Yeah. That's what energizes me and keeps me going. Right, right. Absolutely. And in fact, my testimony was put up on the Earthing Institute also just last month. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. So Rahul Devanji says grounding, can it be done on concrete and wood? Concrete is earth made of earthen materials and it's laying on the earth and concrete holds moisture um, so concrete is ground wood on the other hand is an insulator it's it doesn't hold moisture well it can but it's not conduct it's not a conductor so the things that are conductive are standing on bare earth standing on grass putting your feet on rocks that are on the earth putting your feet in the stream or water on the earth. And concrete, of course. Anything metal touching the earth, if you touch it, then you're grounded. The things that are not grounding are like carpets, wood, wood floors, um, anything plastic, you know, shoes, plastic linoleums and on, on our floors. Most earthen tiles, uh, if they're like saltile handmade tiles, uh, the clay tiles, most of those are semiconductive unless they put a, uh, a, a coat of urethane or something on top of them, then it insulates them. But brick on the earth connected to the earth, tile connected to the earth, porcelain tiles, baked you know, glass tiles. They are not conductive. So glass is an insulator. Plastic is an insulator. I think I covered them all. You can at home 
Mm-hmm. You know, if you have a an earthen hearth, you know, fireplace, that's usually brick or stone. If you sit on them, they're usually grounded. There's places in your home that are grounded. If you're if you have a a bathtub that has metal plumbing, when you take a bath, you're grounded. That's why people love to take baths. They feel better. Taking a shower in the morning, the water's the water is going through metal pipe that's connected to the earth. The water is coming from the earth. It's semi grounded. When falls on you, it's it's contributing electrons. You always feel better after taking a shower. But if the floor is concrete, you're grounded. If there's metal drains, the water is a connected. You're grounded. So taking showers and baths are really important. Or if nothing else, if you're really stressed. Just go over to the cold water in your house, cold water pipe, turn just the cold water on, and just wash your hands in the cold water coming out of the faucet. You're going to feel better. It's grounded. Thank you, Clint. And also, can sitting with cotton pants uh, on concrete or metal benches, does that equally work as well? Yes. If you're, it's like if you get in a car or you sit on a chair for a few minutes, you'll notice that there's a little bit of dampness to your clothing where you're sitting. Okay, so that's perspiration from your body. And that hydration of the clothes is it makes it semi-conductive. So when you sit on a bench, if it's metal, and it's not painted, if it's painted, it won't be. Mm-hmm. But if you're sitting on a bare concrete, bare metal of any kind with blue jeans or regular clothing or whatever it only takes about a minute and you're totally grounded thank you clint uh, we also have a question from neelam Tukari, and uh, she says that um, i have purple and black rash type spots on my face and um, if you want to see it she can switch on her video as well so she wants to know what needs to be done about that uh, again i'm not a doctor in the sense that I can diagnose or recommend a cure or a treatment. But I will say this, if you have anything going on, I would highly recommend that you, first of all, start grounding and spend as much time grounded as you possibly can because I always go back to one thing. You don't have health, then something you are doing is interfering with your immune system to maintain health. So if you can take the things out of your life that maybe you shouldn't be eating or shouldn't be thinking or whatever and get grounded and stay grounded and remove the stress from your body, then the immune system will go to work and return the body to normal. And I've seen it too many times. The immune, the body is a self-healing mechanism. The immune system is the is the main component, and the it's like the thing you have to watch most of all is you know stress. If you think fear, if you think loss, if you whatever you know, if there's stress in your home, stress in your life, then that creates cortisol, fight or flight, and that creates elevated cortisol, elevated sympathetic state, suppression of the parasympathetic, and then inflammation sets in, and then the immune system is compromised totally. So by, again, if, if I knew more, I would say more. If I had more detail, I could say more. But, but basically, um, it starts with nature, Mother Earth, your body and the Earth are one, and put them back together, and then the Earth will heal. The Earth will heal you, the earth will restore your normal being to its most natural state, which is health. So Clint, there's uh, one more question. Uh, Is keeping your feet soaked in mud at home a good alternative? And secondly, if one puts their legs in a plastic bucket full of water, can the effect of earthing be felt? If the mud is connected to the earth, that means you went out in your backyard and you made a little mud puddle and put your feet in. 
it's connected to the earth, it's part of the earth, then it is ground. It does have earth's energy. When you remove it from the earth, then it is disconnected just like you are. And it is not ground. It does not ground. If you bring a bucket of water in the house, put your feet in it, it's going to feel good. Um, because there are some electrons in it that you will absorb. But in order for it to be grounded, you would have to put a wire outdoors in the ground, put a ground rod, something in the ground, connect the wire to it, and then bring the wire in and put it in the bucket. And then the bucket would, the water would be grounded. Yeah, that's an odd way to do it. But the best thing to do is to go outdoors and spend 30 minutes a couple of times a day dampen the earth with a little water put your feet in it mud is fine water's fine anything's fine doing grounding yourself indoors you have to be careful of a couple of things and i always have to caution if you're going to ground yourself indoors you have to use a cord that has a resistor or a safety on it so that you can't accidentally touch something that's you know electrical and you get a shock you know so all of the cords, like the cord that was mentioned with the universal mat, all of the cords, they have a resistor, you know, a 100K resistor. That's not a friendly term to remember, but it's a ground cord. And a ground cord is called a soft ground, meaning it will only let electrons flow at a safe rate from the earth to the body or vice versa. Uh, so that you have no, no chance of a shock or an electrical event. But running bare wire, sometimes you have to be very careful to make sure there's no other electrical appliances. Make sure that they are all in good working condition and no guys experimental type stuff. Clint, many of the things that you mentioned, in fact, some of them, I have been naturally doing for many years on my own. But like me being an Indian, I tend to associate a lot of superstition or, you know, uh, metaphysical with it. For example, um, when I was in a corporate job, if I was very stressed, I would just go find a tree and stand next to it or just sit next to it, leaning on it. And I used to feel a lot of, you know, something holding yes. me together, trees. Then the biggest experience was that I went hiking to some hill station and I saw there was a beautiful university on the way. So I sat on a cliff and I just put my hands on the earth. And like, I, I feel a lot of connection to earth. So much so that though I live in a concrete jungle, but I have a, at least 200 flower pots around me, which I do a lot of gardening. I cannot, I cannot live in an apartment because I need a lot of plants around me. So right. plants, trees. And then uh, that I sat on that cliff and then, uh, you know, those Buddhist kind of uh, leanings, I prayed to the local deities and I prayed to Mother Earth that allow me to come here. And within three months, they had a lot of vacancies and I joined that university. Uh, so, so, yeah, these are just a few experiences I want to share. But now that you say I, a lot of, I can concretize my vague ideas. A lot. Thank you for the talk. You bet. If you'd like to remark. Yes. You know, for sure, when you touch a tree, when you, you mentioned, and the tree is connected to the earth. So the tree is an antenna that radiates earth's energy. So when you get close to a tree, you can feel it. There's a, a calmness that starts to come over the body. And then when you go up and hug a tree or sit by a tree, sit under a tree, especially with your bare hands and bare feet, then I mean, it's just remarkable. But you can as, as little as just grab a branch and hold on to the branch, and it's going to change everything in you. I mean, it's because it's like the it's like, um, thing that comes through me, and, you know, I, I've never... I don't know how to say this sometimes, but it's like you went somewhere and you decided you wanted to be there and some and somehow it was manifest and you ended up there. Well, that's the story of my life in earthing. Uh, whatever I've needed, 
I mean, it comes through me. It's not because of me. There's something, there's a, there's a force and a source. Uh, I could go on for hours on this, but, but basically when I try to do things myself and make things happen myself, life ends up being a mess. <laughs> but if I just back up and say, here, I'm here, use me as you, as you wish, then things come through. People come through. Everything comes together as is needed at the time it's needed when I look back on it. But whenever I've tried to go out and do it myself and make it about myself or something, it just goes upside down. So I'm very much in tune with what you say. And it's very important that when you are grounded, that you are able to open up and, and be a part of this earth and be a part of everything that's living on the earth and, and not be judgmental. It, it is what it is. And it's really about you. What do you, but it's, I, I, again, I don't know how to say it, but basically there's something that comes through me and I don't know where it comes from, but I know that it's guided. Uh, it's intuitive. It's either coming through my heritage or it's coming through the ground and through the trees, through the air. It's just everywhere. And we all see it in each other when we meet new people. This is so heartening to hear somebody else share this. So that means that there's nothing wrong with my head. It's no. real. No. And um, so uh, for a long time, my entire spiritual practice has been experiencing with the senses. I go to Rishikesh once a year, once in two years. So it is very difficult for me to sit in a hall and meditate or read. It is right. easier for me to walk by the river, to feel the wind in my face, to the smells, the sights, the sounds. Right. Yes. That, I, and I do, that is not considered very spiritual though, but I don't know. That is my entire well, practice. Well, you know, I meditate a lot, but most of the time I meditate is just before I go to sleep. I will just rest and then clear my mind and then kind of let, you know, connect with the universe or however you want to explain it. But am that's when things come to me. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's really unfortunate. I mean, but anyhow, meditation is, is to sit and meditate and try to get into a state. You, if you aren't grounded when you're meditating, how could you possibly? Because you can't shut down the noise. You can't shut down the sympathetic noise. So when you get grounded, I, I, Sada Guru has a really good little two or three minute talk on meditation and, and, and yoga ground, being grounded. And, and, but I, I know that for me to meditate, I have to be on my grounding mat in bed or I have to be on a yoga, grounded yoga mat, or I have to be outdoors, preferably just outdoors sitting on the grass, or with, at least with my bare feet and hands on the grass. Then all of a sudden, there's a calmness comes over me. All the noise quiets down. And it's just like I'm a different person. I've entered a different, different space. I grew up in Montana, and I always was always a, I spent a lot of time around Native Americans in, when I was young. And I always noticed that they're not like Angelo, meaning Angelo is about always doing something, whatever. But anyhow, they always, they live somewhere in between the physical earth and the spiritual earth. I mean, they, there's a space that they live in that people can't understand, can't connect with. And I was able to when I was young, and it's always been part of me. It's like when I went through my near-death experience. It was Native America that came to me. It wasn't my worker, my fellow workers chasing money on on, on Main Street. But yeah, I, I mean, so meditation is being able to quiet and to me anyway, and to connect with who I am and what this is. And there's not words for it most of the time. Um, but yeah, meditation is very important, but it's not about sitting in a hall. It is if you have a speaker, a leader, that's whatever, but still you need to get grounded. I've done events with Deepak Chopra where we 
put in a grounded floor and there'd be like a thousand people at an event for three or four days. And so whenever they came in, they were always grounded. The room was grounded. The room was quiet. They take their shoes off and they were grounded. And it was, it was just remarkable. I mean, all of the, all of the people that helped put the show on, they'd say it's just unbelievable because people are more content. They're happy. They're able to meditate. They're able to tune in because you can feel the room. You can feel the energy in the room. And they're all connected. They're all connected via the ground, via the conductivity of the grounding floor. And they're connected in spirit. There are a couple of questions which a lot of people used to ask me while I was at the park. That we are people who are staying in flats and high rises. They have a lot of pots in their house. And um, some of them, most of them nowadays actually are not the um, mud pots, you know, the clay pots. They are most of ceramic or uh, uh, what you call uh, the other China uh, this way. So they are saying that we simply touch the soil, we plant, you know, with our bare hands. Don't we get grounded with that? So I would like you to clarify on that. I mean, they're staying in the high rises. They have pots in their house, in their balcony. And they touch the soil to look after the plants. So is there grounding taking place at that particular point? These balconies are concrete. Uh, yes, they're concrete. Which, mo- which most and of they them are mostly, would... Sorry? Which most of them would be. So in the concrete, there's metal bars. Yes, most and, of the houses, they have like a grill yeah. outside in the window and they keep their pots on that grill, which is iron. Right. Anyhow, the concrete and the metal is all connected to the earth because the building is concrete, which is earth. And it holds moisture. There's, a, there's enough moisture in there that there is going to be some conductivity. So if you have plants First of all, the plants won't do very well if they're not grounded. Yeah. So if the plants are healthy and doing well, yeah. then there is a ground there. You can also uh, just spritz a little water on the concrete patio and sit down, put your bare feet, put your bare feet on it, and you're grounded. So high rises are uh, problematic, but they are as long as they're concrete and metal, then they are grounded. They are earth. They are grounded. They are connected to the earth. They are part of the earth. So they conduct earth's energy. Okay. Thank you. And one request, um, we only have the earthing uh, universal mats available on Amazon for India. The patches and the wristbands and the pillows are only available on, uh, when I went to the earthing institute or the earthing net site, they are only available for the people in America. They don't supply it in India. So, you know, if you could. Well, we, we would like to find someone in India to take this on. We can supply mats. Mats can be made in India. A lot of the ESD, electrostatic discharge materials, a lot of those are made in India, the bracelets and the wires. Uh, but they have to modify them a little bit. But uh, somebody kind of needs to. I always start out with just barefoot. Yeah. Get out there and do as much as you can. But for people whose health is compromised, mm-hmm. you need to be grounded indoors uh, or you don't have any option. You have to be. That's the only way you can get grounded. Then uh, these mats are readily available. But we need to send them bulk. From the manufacturer to India and have somebody in India package them and distribute them in order to keep the cost down so people can afford them. And that was one of the main objectives was yeah. of when I was working with you know people at the World Health Organization or the National Institute of Health Sciences here. They said, you know, we understand what you're doing and it's mm-hmm. good, but don't go out there and scream to the people. You know, you have this problem. You have to give them a no-cost solution, and you have to give them or a low-cost solution. So we have both. You can get grounded for free just by taking your shoes off. And if nothing else, uh, we can get these, these 
in-home devices or mats that people can use. And uh, again, the universal mat is a very simple way to get started. The patches are extremely important uh, for acute situations, you know, like flaring arthritis, flaring lupus, flaring anything that's flaring or cancer or those kind of things. And um, so, yeah, we need to surface somebody. Somebody needs to raise their hand and say, uh, I'll take I'll take that mission on in, yeah. in India. We do we have sent a lot of thing to India. The problem all too often is about people wanting to make money. And that's usually guys. The guys come along, well, I'm gonna get rich, I'm gonna do this. And then all of a sudden they end up going away. So we need some, you know, maybe, maybe a woman to uh, <laughs> who is more of a caregiver. This is more of a, a mission. A, it's more of a, a caregiver type relationship. And, and the thing that we found is once a mom gets grounded and she gets benefit, the first thing she does is she grounds her mom, her mom, <laughs> and, and, takes, and tries to get that under control. And then she grounds her family um, and so on. And then she grounds her neighbors and her whatever. Mm -hmm. So there is, so it's really, it's, um, if there's any way we can get product to India, okay. I would love to support that. For us to do business there, it's not really, really I, this is more of a humanitarian effort than it is a business. <laughs> and um, so, but it's something that is needed. Education is number one. Yeah. And number two are a couple of, products that are readily available. Some people can afford lots of things. Most people can't, even here in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, inflation, the cost of living is so high, most people can barely pay rent and eat. Mm -hmm. So it's, you have to have low cost and no cost solutions. Yeah, sorry, my last question is like what you exactly said now, like I grounded, so my mother I have got for the mat. My daughter has started grounding. The problem is with the teenagers, like my son is a teenager. And, um, you know, I just, and I've been in the education field for past 25 years. So I was wanting, like what you said, you know, to get this concept to the parents and the children, how to, the importance of earning, which, you know, people have got totally disconnected and they use it like, you know, that without, I mean, which shoes on only the children are protected. That's the mindset. So can right. you take out some program for the schools or children or, you know, how do, how can you go about it? Because the next generations are going to have a really tough time. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big problem. And yeah. that's why I, I, it's so important um, to educate the moms because they're the ones who are going to carry this to the world. You can't go to the teenagers. They're not going to, they're not going to have it. They want the fancy shoes. Most of the older people, it's hard to get. It's yeah. hard to take it to them because they want the pills mm -hmm. and a white and a doctor telling them what to do. And this is nature. This is natural. This is so. The only thing, the only way it will ever work is you have to ground mom, get her feeling better, get her health back. Then she'll take care of her mom, yeah. and then the kids will eventually. The pain will start creeping up, the event problems start creeping up, and eventually you have to ground them. I mean, literally ground your children. It's I, I don't know what to do with this. Don't know what to where to go with it except share what I can. We have grounded a few million people around the world now, and I've grounded a few thousand. Those thousand people have grounded millions, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how it will work there. Somebody has to champion it, and then all of a sudden, it'll take on a life of its own, and it's really mom. It's really taking, if, you, if the mom is not healthy and happy, uh, then the, the home is not going to be healthy and happy. So it's really, there's nothing more important. So this is, you know, this is a spiritual movement. It's a yeah. humanitarian movement. Yeah. It's, it's about reconnecting with, with nature. It's about yeah. if, to think that 
just putting your foot on the earth yeah. can drain pain out of your body. Yeah. It, it, it's a message about what we've done and what we have to, we have to go back and look and say, wait a minute. Uh, we have disconnected from nature. We have lost our ground. We have lost our, our electric connect, connection with the earth. And when we do, we, it's like we did a, a plant study, a sunflower study. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I can probably send pictures of it if you would like mm-hmm. to embed. But anyhow, we took cut sunflowers and put one on a vase that was grounded and one that wasn't. And after seven days, you know, they both started out like this. And mm-hmm. after seven days, the one that was ungrounded started to fall and eventually fell over and where the other one kept going for another seven days. So I always ask people, do you want to be, is this what you feel like on, you know, a wilted sunflower or a bright, full of energy sunflower? And it really is. Plants are us. We are plants. I mean, we're, we're all one. So if you see this in the plant, how a plant manifests, it's just remarkable. And um, so, and we do that in schools. We uh, sometimes we'll just take potted, plants and ground one of them put a little ground rod in the soil and it will flourish and it'll grow twice as fast and twice as full where the other one will be a little weak weak and you know not as strong or the cut flowers <clears throat> those will manifest just in a week you can see the difference in a few days but the plants are very easy and then you have to of course find a way to help people understand that that's your cousin yeah. <laughs> and you are you are uh, experiencing the same thing when you are disconnected from the earth. Thank you so much. That was really insightful. That tip of you know you can make the children experiment with the plants and you know yes. and spread yes. it. And it's really insightful. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, we, and we have a, a little paper on the Earthing Institute that tells people in schools how to do the oh, plants. Okay. The plant experiments. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to ask you in the US, you have uh, mostly wooden floors. Am I right, um, Ms. Toba? Uh, you would have mostly carpets, mostly uh, tile. Yes. No, but then I found a lot of wooden floors there, uh, especially in the colder areas. So wouldn't that affect the grounding? Yeah, you're not grounded if you're if you have a wooden floor. Uh, most of when I say that, if you if you have carpet, you generally have a wooden floor. If you have linoleum, some of those are on wooden floors. But if you have a wooden floor, no, they are not grounded. You have to have an earthen floor. You have to have, you know, a slab floor or a concrete floor or a kind. Con- concrete foundational floor and then it is grounded because it's on the earth but as soon as you put as soon as you paint it it loses its conductivity if you put carpet over the top of it if you put um, linoleum or if you yeah so you are correct you have to have a concrete floor Wood floors are not conductive is what I guess the answer, yes. Thank you. So uh, thank you so much for letting me uh, share Earthing with everyone. And if you do have any questions or whatever, go to the Earthing Institute or get a hold of us directly.